I'm going to use the free image editor in Aviary to blend a few pictures together. Before I do that, let me pause just a moment so I can log into my Google Apps account or Jeffco. Once logged in, you can click either on Aviary from the self supported apps or you can always find it in the black bar across the top. Click the More button, you'll see Aviary listed right there. Aviary's image editor is called Phoenix. It is often described as a free version of Photoshop. In fact, a lot of these tools look exactly like they do in Photoshop. If I'm doing basic image editing, I'm always probably going to use Picnic. It's a lot easier, faster. But if you want to do some more advanced photo effects, you're going to need some of those more advanced tools that are in Phoenix. For example, what I want to do is take these three pictures and combine them so that I have a picture of my daughter kicking an angry bird through outer space. Three of her favorite things. To do that, I'm not going to be able to use Picnic. So I'm going to use Phoenix instead which is a great photo editor. If you have had some experience with Photoshop, it'll be a lot easier. If you haven't, this product does have a pretty high learning curve, but you will get used to it. There are some great resources and tutorials online. One of my favorites is this YouTube video that's put out by aviary.com called Introduction to Aviary's Image Editor, and this is, what, this is the tutorial I used to learn the product. Alright, so let's get started. I'm going to go ahead and load an image file to start from instead of starting from scratch. And I'm going to browse to the picture from outer space to use as my background for this photo composition. There it is, Space Path. Click Upload. Alright, time to insert the Angry Bird. I'm going to go into the File menu and import another file. There it is. Click Upload. The second image comes in on a different layer, which is really important in photo editing. And this is how we'll be able to control some of the different effects that we do. Now, the bird is pretty large, so um, probably one of the next things I'm going to need to do is just shrink that down. But I'm going to go ahead and put in my third part of this composition, which is a picture of my daughter playing soccer. Alright, so just like before, I'll go File, Import File, Browse to the picture I want to add. And click Upload. Alright, and there's my new picture. It's so large that it's completely covered the other two layers. In fact, sometimes when I try and put in a picture that's larger than the current canvas, I'll get a message that asks me what I want to do to resize the canvas or crop the picture, and, um, and that's a good way to handle that too. So, the first thing I think I'm going to do is cut out the area of this picture that I want to use in that outer space photo. My other layers are still visible. Over here in this layers window is where I can see all my different layers. I see um, untitled one is just a white background, then I've got the space background that I want to use. I have the angry bird and then I have the soccer picture. And these eyeballs allow you to, s to see the layers. So if I turn off this layer, you can see now I can finally see the angry bird. I can turn that one off as well. And I can turn these on and off. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is crop just a little bit around Jason. And to do that, I'm going to use the free form selection tool, which looks like this lasso over here. So I'm going to click this. And I'm just going to use my mouse to click and drag and draw around roughly <laughs> the area I want to include. Now I want to make sure I don't leave anything out. And so I'm just going to draw around. If I didn't like it, let's say I messed up here. And you can see the part inside this little blinking lasso light is what's going to be kept. I want to redraw this so you can control D to deselect and start again. All right, let me give this another try here. All right, now I have a blinking area that's definitely going to include all the parts that I need. Use it. Instead of deleting everything around it, I'm going to keep a backup copy of this layer just in case I need to go back and 
edit some more. And so I'm going to actually go up to the edit menu and make a copy of what is inside that selection. And I'm going to go to the layer menu up here, make a new layer, and I'm going to paste that little selection onto it. I can't really see anything because I pasted exactly what I'd copied right on top of what I already had. So what I'm going to do is go into the layer 4, which is the entire soccer picture. I'm going to turn that off so I can't see it. I'm probably never going to use it again. When I'm done editing, I'll delete it. But just in case I need to come back to it, I have it still available. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and move JC kind of into the little galaxy stream here where I want her to I'm going to use the move tool, which is up here. And I'm just going to drag her where I want her to go. Now it's not working, and I'm not even getting the move tool over here, and that's because I'm on the wrong layer. So in the layers window, I can see I'm still on Untitled 4. So I'm trying to move this image, which is really on the layer 6. So I'm going to go ahead, so I'm going to go ahead and click on layer 6, and now I can easily see how I can move her around. I think I'll put her right about there. Okay, so I've done a little bit of editing and I'm getting this reminder to save my work. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Aviary is a web-based tool. It does not autosave for me. So just in case I would lose a connection or my computer would freeze up, I'm going to go ahead and click the Save As button. Give my creation a title. And click Save as New Creation. Now this file is saving for me in my Google Docs. If I want to go back and edit it, there will be a folder in my Google Docs at Aviary Creates titled Aviary and within that folder will be a document titled JC and the Angry Birds in Space and if I need to edit this or go back and make any other changes it will have a link that will take me right back to this editor. Once your project's done saving just click continue working on your creation to continue editing. Alright the next thing I need to do is to shrink down this Angry Bird, take out the background and help make it take the place of the soccer ball right here. So the first thing I'm going to do though is change the direction. I want the Angry Bird looking away from my daughter's foot. So I need to make sure first I'm editing on the right layer. Right now I'm on layer 1. I need to get to layer 3 which is where the Angry Bird is located. Then I'll go up to the edit menu and I'm just going to flip him horizontal. There, now he's looking away. Perfect. Now I want to get rid of the white background. There's a wonderful tool called the Magic Wand tool right here. I'm going to click on this tool. It has a tolerance level set that will apply more for when we're trying to remove the background um, of the soccer field. For right now I'm just going to leave it set at 32. And I'm going to double click in the white area. And what it does is it selects all of the area in this picture that is similar to the color that I selected, which was white. So I can see kind of a little bit of a dotted line going around the white areas. It's probably hard to see on the screencast, but I can see the little dotted lines going around the Angry Bird. And now all I need to do is hit the delete button and it's going to delete everything that is selected. Much better. Now I just need to move the bird down and shrink it down a little bit. So again, I'll use that move tool. Oops, I can see that my layers are out of order. I need the angry bird to be on top of the layer where JC is playing soccer. So all I need to do is go over to my layers window and drag the angry bird up above layer 6, putting it at the very top. There. Now the angry bird is still too large, so I need to revisit the edit menu. and free transform it. Now free transform is not a choice, it means you still have something selected. So just go outside this menu, hit control D, and then come back to the edit menu and select free transform. I get those anchors at the corner of the image. I'm going to shrink it down to about the size of a soccer ball. And then if I click a little bit in front of the box around the angry bird, I can also adjust the angle. If I click in the middle of and I can move the Angry Bird. So I'm just going to adjust this until I'm happy with the dimensions and the angle. And when I'm happy, I'll just hit Enter. 
Okay, now for the hard part, removing this green background around my daughter. So I'm going to need to go to the layer, layer 6, where she is with the soccer ball. And I'm going to remove the layer using a combination of that magic wand tool and the eraser. So I'm going to click on the magic wand. I'm going to leave its tolerance set at 32. Now what that does is when I select a color, say this green color, and double click on it, it's going to select a range of colors similar to it and that range is dependent on this number 32. Now you can see it selected all of these things. It also selected part of her shoe and part of the Angry Bird. So it's selecting too much. I need to lower the tolerance so that it's not going quite so far in selecting other colors. So I'm going to control D to deselect that choice. Once I get the tolerance level about right, I'll just start highlighting areas and hitting the delete button. I know I'm going to have a lot of cleanup that I'll go back and do with the eraser tool, but this will at least give me a little bit of a head start. And I can tell I'm not getting great results with the magic wand, so I think I'm going to go ahead and switch over to the eraser tool, which is located behind the paintbrush. If you click on the paintbrush, you'll see the eraser right here. The size and hardness are already set. I'm going to adjust these later as I need to, but for right now, I'm going to increase actually this the size right now and I'm going to go around and delete some of this. I'm going to pause the video while I work my way around and then I'll show you how I zoom in and make it a little bit smaller for those areas that have a little bit more detail. Alright, so I've used the eraser tool to go around and trim out most of that background. I do want to show you how I work in some of these smaller spaces. So what I will do is use the view tool to zoom in. And a shortcut for doing that is um, control plus on your keyboard. I have a much better view, but my eraser is definitely too big, so I'm going to go and change the size of it to about six or seven. And now I can go along the edge here. Now I don't have to worry about the Angry Bird because I can delete right over the top of him and he won't go anywhere because he's not on this layer. Remember he is on a different layer. So I don't even need to worry about moving him or being careful not to delete him. So I'm just going to drag the eraser down. If I make a mistake I can just edit, undo, or control Z. I'm going to clean up this spot. Okay, so that's much better. It's definitely not perfect, but remember we won't be viewing it this close. If I control minus to zoom out, you can see the details a lot more blurred, so I don't have to be ultra perfect. I'm going to zoom back in. There's a couple of other areas I need to address. One is down here by the shoe where the grass is kind of blending in with her cleat. I'm not going to use the eraser tool for that. I'm going to save that for later. And the other is the coloring around her hair. Now, her hair is definitely blending in with the background, and so I'm going to soften the eraser. Instead of having a really hard line, I'm going to turn the eraser down to about a hardness of 10 or so. And it will, instead of making a crisp edge, it's going to kind of blur the two. Oh, made a mistake there, so I'm going to control Z. And by softening the eraser, I get a little bit more of a soft glow look, kind of like the stars in the background are, are reflecting off her hair. It looks a little bit more natural. So I'm going to go ahead and finish that up, and then we'll fix the cleat. All right, just one last thing to do, and it's to try and fix this area where her cleat was into the grass. I want to try and make it look like her cleat dips into the little galaxy stream here. So I'm going to go into the layer where the galaxy is, which is layer 2, and I'm going to use the lasso tool just to do a free form selection. I'm going to try and draw a circle around the area where her foot is at. Now again, I'm selecting on the layer underneath her foot, so when I copy this, it's going to copy the blue background behind her foot, and I'm just going to try not to get too much of her sock in here. 
Okay, the marching ants show me about what I've selected, and that should work. I'm going to go up to the Edit menu and make a copy of that. Again, I'm copying what's behind her foot. Now I'm going to create a new layer. And I'm going to go ahead, the, the layer that just came in put itself kind of in the middle here. I want it on the very top, so I'm going to drag it up to the top of the layer window. And on this layer, I'm going to paste in what I copied. You can see now her foot is completely covered. <laughs> and now what I want to do is just adjust the transparency of this, and I can do that using this drop down under the alpha menu. And I'm just going to turn it down slowly until I feel like I can see her shoe coming through, but a lot of that color is drowned out. And that looks pretty good. One other thing I can do, I'm going to go ahead and select none to get rid of the marching ants, is I can go in and, and paint a little tiny bit over this area that's still just a little green. So I'm going to go to the paintbrush tool. I'm going to pick this airbrush tool, and I'm going to pick a color. So you can pick your colors down here with just click on this little color box. Click on the color box and you get this little eyedropper tool. And you can, anywhere you click with your eyedropper is the color that's selected. So I'm going to pick kind of the blue that's right by her shoe. And then I'm going to close the box. Alright, now I'm just going to use the airbrush tool to just kind of add just a little smidge of color just to get rid of that green. because this layer has set to some transparency. It doesn't make a big difference, but I think that looks good. So I'm going to call that done. Now I'm going to save my project one more time, and then I'll show you how you can export it out as a picture that you can put in Picasa or your website or anywhere else. I've zoomed out. There's my final image. I think she'll really like it. Now I'm going to export it. I can choose what type of file I want. I think I'm going to go with a JPEG. I can select some of the options. And once this green download button appears, it means your image is ready to save. There is a little bit of, I don't know, a glitch, but something that I've noticed that often it's not saving as a JPEG or whatever I called it. So this is easily remedied. What you need to do is just name your file and then add .jpg. Once you have the right location, just click Save. Now you just have to wait for your image to download. And then you can switch over to your Google site for the Google 3 course. You can see I've already put in my before pictures, and now I just need to put in my after. I'm going to insert an image. And pick my final copy. Now this is a really large file, so most of it is hanging off the edge of the screen. So I'm just going to select Instead of the original size, small, medium, or large, I'm going to try large. That looks great. I'm going to click Save. And my aviary project is finished. So that's aviary in a nutshell. If you want to stay tuned for some troubleshooting tips that I've encountered when using this product, just keep listening.